Hi everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, my name's Lisa Fion and I'm an artist and archer from Ontario, Canada. And I'm here to do a lot of drawing using Procreate and also using an inspiration photo from Sketchy app. And I just wanted to um, share with you guys uh, some of my tips and tricks for using Procreate. Today. And this is kind of a warm up for our 30 days, 30 days challenge that's happening on July 1st, which is up shortly. And in the 30 day drawing challenge, I'm just one of six teachers who are sharing a drawing, kind of how they approach drawing using that Procreate. And we'll be drawing a face together every single day, 30 days. And all teachers are going to be using Procreate for their lessons. Um, but you're actually welcome to use any drawing medium of your choice. So you can use a different drawing app or you can use analog materials. So it's kind of whatever works for you guys. So let me just see if I can kind of figure out um, how to comments here in a second. So hold on. Just if I can see you guys on YouTube here. So it looks like there's... Um, people from all over the world, which is amazing. And uh, I'm from Ontario, so I'm from near Toronto. I son is in Toronto. And I think I can see your comments now, so hopefully it'll work out. I want to introduce this to our muse. So I'm just going to get this up on the screen here. So. Sorry guys, I gotta figure, figure out the technology here. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this um, screen on screen view and I'm still there in the corner. So we're gonna be drawing this beautiful picture today and um, and the model's name that we're, that we're going to be using as our source image, you can find it on the Sketchy app and her name is Medusa Enigma on Sketchy. And she asked me to read a quote to you guys. So I wanted to start out with reading that quote because when I asked her if I could use her photo for this um, challenge, um, she gave me this beautiful quote. So um, from Medusa, be the change you wanna see in the world. The saying is true as it is old. You can only control how you raise your family to be. So be understanding, tolerant, slow to lash out and quick to listen. Focus on teaching yourself so that you may teach your children so that they may change the world when you're gone. And then, like I said, that is a quote from our uh, model today that we're going to be using for this challenge. So thank you so much, Medusa, um, for letting me draw this amazing photo today. So um, in terms of the sketchy 30 day challenge, I mentioned to you guys before, all the artists are going to be drawing in Procreate, but that doesn't mean that you have to draw in Procreate. You could use any materials you want, anything you're comfortable with, but I would encourage people out there maybe that have an iPad, even if you don't have an Apple Pencil, even if you just have a regular stylus, I would encourage you to try it out because I absolutely love drawing in Procreate. It's become basically my number one medium of choice for the last several years. And it's just such an amazing app with all sorts of um, kind of cool materials that you can use that mimic real life textures and real life drawing mediums. So um, this is what I'm gonna be using today. And um, you can sign up for the 30 days, 30 faces, 30 days challenge in the Sketchy shop right now. And there is a link in this video to the challenge. And what's really cool right now is Sketchy actually has a promo on right now where if you buy the 30 faces 30 days class you can get any course for 80% off um, which is a pretty amazing deal so what I was saying too is if you've never used procreate before and over the next week you want to kind of warm up with one of the other procreate classes myself as well as some other teachers on there have some great procreate classes for beginners and I can always recommend some to you if you're looking for something in particular Okay, so I thought we would get started. Um, one of the, the um, pencils that I really enjoy using these days 
is found under sketching and it's called the peppermint pencil. And I'm just double checking comments. If you guys have any questions along the way, please feel free to comment and I will try to get back to you, but I'm gonna be focusing a little bit on drawing too. So I really like the peppermint pencil because it's kind of a nice um, smooth pencil um, and that should be found in your brush library already in Procreate. And so what I'm gonna do here is just kind of roughly put in her eyes, eyebrows, and sometimes I'll just kind of like look at the photo that's right beside me here and you can even make it the same size. So I'm using a split screen view on my iPad and I find that really helps to be able to kind of observe um, the proportions of a face. So I'm just doing really, really light, loose sketch. And I'm gonna show you guys a trick in a second because I'm drawing this face a little bit bigger than really what I want. So I'm gonna do some, um, some lines that are just gonna help me with proportion. And I'm gonna zoom in here now. And once I have it more zoomed in, part of my process is usually, so I've done a really kind of rough line work at this point. So part of my process now is going to be to refine that. So with my peppermint pencil, I'm just going to try to make the shape of the eye a little bit more detailed here. And what I love about um, this app, what I love about Procreate is that this actually to me feels like drawing a pencil on paper. Other than the, the paper, you know, that is glass that I'm drawing on here right now, but it really does have that same kind of feel of using a pencil. So part of the reason why I put that eye line in is when I do my eyes, I want to make sure they are on that eye line and that they, they match up perfectly so that they're on the same plane. And we're just going to kind of rough in some details here of the nose. I'll usually do um, details like, for example, the jewelry that she's wearing. I would do that probably later on, on another layer. So another thing that's really great about using Procreate in particular is that you can use layers. And that's, I think, where it really differs from traditional forms of drawing and painting is that you do have the ability to kind of isolate layers and go back and delete layers and there's just so much versatility with using them. So I'm just kind of, again, just roughing in these features. I reduced my opacity. So on the side here, I should mention to you guys, for those of you guys that are new to Procreate, this is the brush size. So um, you can bring up your slider to make the brush bigger or smaller to bring it down. And then this is the opacity slider, which is how dark and how light the pencil is. So, I mean, I started off, um, you know, going pretty light, but now I want to go over top of it with some darker marks because I'm more confident with my proportions now that I've roughed it in. And if you do have a pressure sensitive stylus like the Apple Pencil, um, you also don't only have to adjust opacity, but it also depends on how much pressure you put on the iPad itself. So. I can use, even though my opacity, say, is at 82%, I can use a light stroke or I can get darker and darker. And I haven't changed that opacity, but instead I've just adjusted the pressure that I put on the screen. And I'm double tapping or tapping with two fingers to undo. Or you can use the undo buttons that's down here. So 
So I'm just going to kind of color these areas in for now. And this is just really rough. This is our first step. So we'll just kind of quickly lay down the groundwork and then we're going to start adding colors shortly. I like to do oftentimes like geometric shape circles for parts of the face that stand out. So the apples of the cheeks, the nose, um, tip of the nose, the chin, even sometimes the forehead because it just kind of reminds me to add volume to those areas. So that's why if you see me doing that, that's just kind of a little tip or a little trick that I do that I enjoy when I'm drawing. Okay, so it started out, you know, it's pretty rough right now. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rename this layer sketch. And then we're going to take this transform tool that looks like an arrow, click on it, and I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller so that it's more in line with the size of my source picture here. And I wanna have room to add the, the headdress as well. So I need to have a little bit of room there. So I'm gonna kind of move this over and adjust that, which again is something compositionally that's much harder to do um, with traditional materials. So I'm just going to kind of quickly rough in the headdress. And one reason why I chose this photo is it has, it has great lighting, it's a really beautiful photo, but I also loved the pop of color. So we're definitely going to be having fun with adding in some purples there. And then I'm just kind of adjusting. I want to make sure this shoulder actually comes up much higher. So I'm just going to kind of adjust that dimension there. So that looks better. And I have to work on the eyebrows too. We need to make them a little bit more pronounced and make sure they're in the right spot. So just a quick kind of messy sketch. And I'm just gonna go over to the prints and see if anybody has any questions so far. Some people are putting an iPad on their birthday list. Teresa said that, that's amazing. That would be an amazing birthday present. If you guys have any questions along the way, sorry, I'm just kind of scrolling through right now, please let me know. So um, I've finished my sketch layer. So now we're gonna, start, we're gonna start a color layer. And I like to have two color layers. Um, anybody who's taken any of my courses before, I kind of have been doing this process for years and I actually just made a new group, so let me just undo that. Um, so I'm gonna do a color under layer and name it color under. And the reason why I do this is it's kind of like a base layer in painting where I can still see my sketch through, through the layer. And then I do always a color over layer and that's where I really add my details and cover up the sketch parts that I don't want to be seen. So I'll make a color over layer. So we'll start with color under. And right now I just have it set to this beautiful Flourish palette that I downloaded off of actually the Procreate forum. Um, so you can find it online for free if you guys are interested in this palette. And it has a lot of nice purples in it. So um, that's one reason why I chose it. And we're going to introduce some of these kind of crazy colors into our portrait as well. And one thing I love about any medium that I use is I love using color. Um, and I like using unexpected colors in skin tone. So we're going to do that a little bit today too. So we'll start with traditional skin tone colors and then we'll move more toward adding fun details with extra, extra little pops of color. So I'm going to choose kind of a, a medium tone for her skin here. 
And we're going to use my favorite brush in the whole world, which is the gouache brush. You can find it under painting. And I actually have recently created my own set of brushes. So um, I'm going to show you guys that in a second. I'm also going to be using my own brushes today as well, because what's really cool too is once you've played around with Procreate for a while, you can actually experiment with adjusting existing brushes or even making your own brushes. So with this gouache brush, and this is just the one that comes with Procreate, I'm just going to put on a nice base layer to this painting. And it's just going to be very sketchy and loose. Um, so I've just done a base color there. And then I'm going to add in a little bit more of a warmer tone, so like a peachy orange kind of color. And I'm going to go over it in sections where I see kind of that glow in the portrait. So I'm going to add it here and here. And then I also see some like kind of pinky tones. So I'm even going to add in a bit of pink. Just make her lips pink just for fun. And remember, this is just a base layer. So you can have a lot of fun with color on this layer because you're going to end up covering up too. If you want to grab a, a color that you've already placed down, you simply tap and hold on the screen and you can grab that color. And that saves you going back and forth to your palette all the time. And over the, the 30 day challenge with Sketchy, um, all of the artists are going to be showing you guys all of their own tips for using Procreate. And I know for my lessons that I did, um, I tried to do different techniques and different styles in each of the lessons. So each of my artworks for the 30 day challenge, they are all in a slightly different style and using some slightly different techniques. So hopefully that'll give you guys lots of variety. Um, and I hope that you'll learn a lot. Um, but also I just really look forward to seeing what everybody creates. I love seeing what students in the class make. Um, oftentimes they're really, really beautiful, these challenges. And also I just want to say too, it can seem kind of daunting to have to draw, you know, 30 faces in 30 days. But the thing is, is that you don't have to put them all as beautiful, 100% finished products. You could take the challenge in in a whole bunch of different ways. You can work at your own pace as well because you'll have access to the course even after the 30 days. So, um, you know, you can work at your own pace and you can also choose to use, you know, some style to be more abstract and might not take as long as some other more realistic styles, let's say. So you can kind of have fun with it. And I've participated in a few 30 day challenges in the past. And I know for myself, um, I really enjoyed learning from other artists and also um, just participating every day in a community where everybody is, is drawing and learning together. Okay, so I have a, a really um, rough kind of base layer of color. Now I'm going to go over to my color over layer, and this is where I'm going to add nicer detail. So I'm going to zoom right in on both the photo and the face. And I'm going to get a dark, almost black brown, and I'm going to use that um, against, if I, I want to use the gouache brush. So one thing that I wanted to do when I created my own brushes was I was oftentimes switching between the size of the gouache brush and going down really, really small to make a fine tipped point. So I created my own um, brush pack, and I actually created a gouache fine tip brush. And to me, it's kind of like this perfect blend of um, the peppermint pencil that I love so much and then also um, oh, something just popped up on my screen maybe um, and then also the uh, gouache brush that I love so much so I tried to make this kind of hybrid brush that would work for what I like to do in Procreate so I'm just going to use this brush now to add my outlines has a bit of a bleed to it too. 
And you could also use Procreate's um, gouache brush just on a smaller setting to do this, or you could also use the peppermint pencil that I showed you before. Those would both be good choices as well for this application. And then I'm going to go to my gouache soft brush that I made that's just a really nice, really soft kind of blendable brush. And even though um, in the photo it's hard to see all the details of the eyes, because it's kind of in shadow, um, you can kind of imagine some of those details. So I like to, even when I can't see them, I'll still try to put them in. So I might add a little bit of a warm tone to parts of the eyes just to make them really kind of pop. So I'm just adding kind of a golden tone along with the brown. Sometimes I like to jump around on my portraits. I'm, I don't know why I do that, but I'm like, oh, I'm using brown right now, so I'll just jump around and use it in other areas as well. So you might see me kind of jump all over the place. So this is my soft gouache brush, and it creates this kind of hazy cloud effect, and you can use the side of your Apple Pencil. I love the effect it has on the side because I can just create this really soft, blended look. And what I want to do is I want to put down a little bit of a base with a warm peachy tone. So I'm going to go over the whole face because remember, most of this is still a base layer, right? So we need to cover up some of those pencil lines. And in my work, I often like to have kind of a balance between some line work showing some abstract elements and then some elements that are more realistic. So we're probably going to kind of go that direction with this portrait. Just push up my opacity a bit. And I'm kind of ignoring highlights for now. So I'm doing the darker areas and then we're gonna go back in and do the highlights and then the really um, deep shadows as well. So I'm going doing kind of darker areas plus mid-tones at the moment. Same with eyebrows, I'm going to fill them in, but I'm not going to do the eyebrow detail until a little bit later. I just want to make that shadow more intense, so I'm going to kind of block it in there. Just zoom in so you guys can see a bit more. I like to use, I mentioned before, a lot of color in my portrait. So we're just starting with the color right now. There's gonna be a lot more added in. I'm starting to add a bit of a highlight over here. So I'm still using that soft gouache brush just to add in the highlights. I'm gonna grab a bit of a kind of yellow tone as well, a really pale yellow to do some of the highlighting on this cheekbone.
reduce my opacity a little bit more. Grabbing like a really bold orange color to do the areas that are brighter. And again, I might just do like the base of something. So I'm doing the base of her lips orange, even though they're clearly not orange in the photo, but we can fix that up later. And then I'll go over top of it with more of a neutral tone, just to tone back some of the skin tones that I've put down. Do a little bit under the eye. And then I also want to add definition to the nose. So I'm going to grab a darker brown to do as a shadow. And then I'm going to add that darker brown also to the tops of the lips and the bottom of the lips. And I know I still have to work on the eyes more, so why don't we jump to that? So I don't like to leave the whites of the pupils pure white on any portrait. I like to add kind of shades of gray and blue into the whites of the eyes. So I'm just going to color this over with a little bit of a pale blue. And then I'm gonna choose like a blue gray. And this is where we're gonna kind of make that eyeball look rounded which is so important because it's what's going to make that eye look 3D and look more realistic. And you can grab colors that are right beside too to blend away outlines. So that's what I'm doing at the bottom of my lid right now is that I'm just simply grabbing colors to blend away. It's a lot of layering. And a lot of practice too, I mean, just like anything, um, if you are using Procreate for the first time or you've just started, it is a new medium. So it's it takes time to get used to it. It takes time to get used to the feel of drawing on glass instead of paper. Um, but I do think it's definitely, you know, worth it because it's just so versatile and you can do so much in this program. Okay, so once it's starting to come along the way you want, and I'm going to add my, my gray on this too, you can actually start to blend your paint a little bit, your digital paint. So we're going to be using um, the smudge tool in a second, which just looks like a, a pointed or a finger pointed. Just also remember that eyes will definitely have like a shadow effect over the eyelid of the eye. So I'm adding that in as well. Add a little bit of a pink kind of, I wanted to go more red, pinky red tone to the corner here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing I did the, with the other eye. I'm just gonna grab colors that are right beside the eye to just blend them out. And a little bit of a line under the eye. This is me jumping around again, right? I had to go over to the nostril. It was bugging me. Okay. So something like this. So now I'm really going to like, like, I'm really going to observe my source image. So at this point in a drawing, 
I like to zoom out and I can already tell the eyes are a little funny, a little off. So I want to really get the eyes perfect before I move on to smudging everything out. So I'm just going to make sure I get the shape of the eye the way I want it. And I think part of it is I need to put in a little bit of a corner on that eye. And also I'm going to bring up the bottom of this eye a little bit more. This one a little bit more. The eyes are so important too because this is I think what's going to make it look like the person I'm drawing more than anything else. So I'm just kind of going back and forth on colors and details. Hopefully try to get something close. And I can smudge that out in a second. I think I also know that the problem might be on this side, I need to bring the white of the eye down a little bit. Lots of adjustments, especially when I did a really quick sketch. So if, if your sketch is really fast, you're probably going to run into doing more adjustments down the road than if you spend the time to put in the work on the initial sketch. Here we go. So we still have some stuff to work on, but I'm gonna to go to the smudge tool, which is also set to gouache. Um, the smudge tool, it's a really great tool, especially if you set it to the same brush you've been using in your portrait. Um, of course, you can also set it to a different brush to create like different textures and move your paint around in, in a kind of textured way too. But what I'm doing now is, I don't wanna overuse my smudge, my smudging but I just want to blend in some of these areas to make them a little bit softer. And I can always go back over them later on too and make it more crisp again. But just for right now, there's just certain areas that I really want to blend in. So I'm going to start with the eyes. And you can push and move paint around like this, which is really helpful because um, it can also help with adjusting the proportions of your portrait too. And it's exactly what I would actually do when I paint in acrylic or watercolor, especially acrylic, I would say. It's just making some fine adjustments with the paint itself. Okay, now I'm putting back in kind of the whiter parts of the eyes to make the eyes really pop. And then I also want to get this corner here a little bit darker.
And I'm sorry guys, I get tunnel visioned on my drawing, so I haven't looked at the comments in a long time. Um, a bunch of people said they signed up. Yay! I'm glad you guys are in the class. I can't wait for July 1st. Just a reminder that the Sketchy 30 Faces 30 Days starts on July 1st, and you can sign up anytime in the Sketchy shop. There's a link in this video. Um, there's also a link to this portrait that I'm drawing in the video as well. And Sketchy currently has a great deal on that if you sign up for the Sketchy 30 Faces 30 Days, which starts in July, then you can get 80% off any other class. And you could choose, for example, if you wanted to, one of my Procreate classes um, that's on the shop as well. So that's something you guys can check out. Um, so Cindy mentions your her iPad is older, so it doesn't have a split screen. Um, yeah, that's true. It's It was an iOS update a few years back. That, so if you have an older iPad that doesn't let you update to the newest iOS, then um, yeah, you might not be able to do split screen view. It is handy, but it's not necessary. I used to draw on an iPad mini before I had an iPad Pro, and I would just use my phone or print out my image or use my computer. So you can make it work definitely, even if you don't have the split screen function. And I'm sorry, I'm just scrolling through comments. Okay, I don't see any more questions. If I miss them, um, because it's really hard to see for me right now while I'm drawing, then I will go back on YouTube after this gets posted and I will answer any of your questions um, just through commenting later on if I miss it right now. So apologies if I am missing anything. So I'm just going to keep adding some highlights. Some bright colors. I also think I have to kind of fix the, the face shape up a little bit, so I might do that right now. So at this point, you could choose to, for example, uncheck your sketch layer, get rid of it completely, or sometimes I'll just go back to my sketch layer and just with um, an eraser tool, I might just erase some of the, the sketch marks that I don't want visible anymore because they might have been useful for me earlier, but not so much anymore. Another trick is if you just want to kind of reduce the overall impact of the sketch layer, you could also click on the little N in your layer panel and reduce the opacity of that sketch layer. And so what you're doing there is you're just um, making it less visible. Um, so that's another little trick too. And then on the color under layer, I'm going to do the same thing where I kind of go with my eraser and just erase along the edge so that when I go on to my color over layer, I can use my eraser to clean up the face shape and make it more precise. So this definitely, I might put in a swipe of purple right now, just so I have a sense of where I want the headdress to start. So we'll just put in a little bit of purple here. And we can fix that up later, but at least for now it kind of gives us a good start. And I am still on the color over layer. So I'm just kind of taking colors that I already had down on my canvas 
right now and layering them over top. And I've kind of completely omitted the ear here, so I should probably put an ear in. And I might, again, just go to my other layer and erase anything that I don't need. Something like that. The lips look pretty unfinished to me, so I'm going to kind of work on those for a little while. So I'm going to switch over to, I have a few other gouache brushes. I have a flat brush and a flow brush. So I'm going to grab the flow brush right now to do the lips because it has a bit of a texture to it. If you can kind of see here, it's got this cool kind of almost a little bit like watercolory kind of um, texture to it. So I think that would be really great for the lips. And I find just like with a few strokes there, you can kind of create an interesting effect. I might use it for a bit of the shadowing here too. And then I'm going to go back to my soft brush and actually I'll go to my smudge tool first and just smudge out a little bit of this color. And then I might go back to Procreate Squash Brush. And we'll just take like an intense dark pink. And I've changed it right now to a smaller tip. So I've reduced the size of my brush because what I really want to do now is, I mean, I've smeared paint around this canvas probably long enough. So now what I want to do is really try to get into the details of this portrait. One trick with any kind of portrait is I find the upper lip on, often has a little highlight above it, which will just help make the lips look more 3D. There's actually a lot of lighting to work with in this portrait. So one of the reasons why I chose the portrait was just all of the beautiful lighting effects, which you can have fun with and, and use all these different colors.
I'm really excited about the, the 30 sketchies, um, 30 faces, 30 days as well, because it's not just me doing it, but there's six artists in total who are all going to be using Procreate um, to draw with. And then just a reminder to you guys, just to reiterate that you do not need to use Procreate to sign up for the challenge. Um, a lot of what we teach can be applied with any medium because portraiture is the main challenge of drawing a face every single day for 30 days. So you can use whatever medium you are comfortable with or you want. Um, but I know a lot of you probably have an interest in maybe learning a little bit more about Procreate. And what's really cool about the challenge is that you'll be able to learn from six different artists. And we all have our own unique styles. Um, none of us do the exact same type of work. So you can just kind of learn from everybody and see what works for you and hopefully come away with a lot of new techniques for using Procreate or um, just portraiture in general. So I know my style that I tend to do with Procreate, I was mentioning earlier, is I, I, I kind of describe it as being semi-abstract in the sense that I like to add like pops of color or, or some kind of abstract elements, maybe not finish a part of the drawing, a part of the body, um, but then have some kind of re more realistic elements as well. So it's a little kind of combination of both, I think. I'm using the um, peppermint pencil right now. I'm still trying to get the eyes right. They're not right in my mind. I don't know, guys. It's nerve-wracking drawing for an audience. <laughs> yeah, but the I'll just keep working on it. Sometimes portraits, um, you know, come the proportions come really easily for all of us, probably, and then sometimes you just end up struggling a little bit more. And I think I'm having a more struggling kind of day. But I'm going to keep working at it. So I'm using the peppermint pencil. I just love adding a little bit of like a sharpness to the portrait at this point and going in and, and adding some detail work. So zoom right in, for example, on this eye. And I like to experiment a lot. So if you are using Procreate for, you know, the first time or you're just learning, I would recommend, like right now I'm, I've only used three layers, but I would recommend if you're like, hey, I want to try something, but I'm not sure about it, just simply create a new layer by clicking on the plus button, test something out. If it doesn't work out, you can always uncheck or delete that layer later. So it's really um, great in that way because I just feel like it lends itself to more experimentation, especially with different styles of art or going out of your comfort zone because you're able to isolate things and work on separate layers. So I'm just still adding, I'm still working on this eye. I'm gonna add like a bit of a highlight there. I'm using almost like a, the same pale blue as the eye. I might just put in a few little hatching marks just to suggest detail in the eye, especially where it gets hidden in the shadows. If you guys have any questions for me at any point, um, and I don't know, maybe you've been asking me questions and I haven't seen them, but please just let me know in the comments. Um, I'll just kind of keep, keep scrolling. And again, if I miss your question or comment, then I will definitely answer it later on. Um, so if you do have questions about anything that I'm doing right now, just feel free to drop a comment.
So I'm still using my pencil. And I want to make this line really kind of pop out. Still working on the eyebrows too. You can already see what's wrong over here. I'm going to bring this eyelid down a little bit. And then I'm going to just smudge this out a bit and I'll change that that eyelid in a second. So I'm using my smudging tool, which is a really fun tool. I always caution people if you don't want your work to look overly digital, just try not to overuse the smudger because that's what's going to give it that really smooth kind of digital art look, unless of course that's what you're going for. Um, but you could also overuse the smudger, have fun with it, and then um, you can always do what I tend to do, which is go back in with something, a pencil or something that has a little bit more of a crisp edge, and later on just kind of add in your texture. Okay, so I'm trying to fix kind of the shape of the nose. going to change over back to my brush set, my gouache brush. I've been, um, over the last, I don't know, six months or so, I've been really having a lot of fun making my own custom brushes. And actually in one of my sketchy classes that I did a while back, it's called um, Portraits and Procreate with Lisa Filion, Mastering Media. And in that class, I teach you how to make your own custom brush. So if anyone is interested in making their own brushes, that class definitely um, has a whole section on making a custom brush. And so I just find it something kind of relaxing to do. And it's almost like this therapeutic thing too, where I'm just making something that I know is going to bring me so much joy because I'm going to I'm making something the way I exactly want to use it. So I really love that I can make my own brushes in Procreate. And you can actually, you don't even need any other programs to make the brush. Um, you could use other programs, but you actually only need Procreate. And that's it in order to make your own custom brushes. Um, also, though, I would recommend taking some good pictures um, of like textures and um, details that you would want in order to, to use for a brush. That's another way that you can kind of incorporate your own kind of take. I'm adding purple into the skin right now. So I told you guys I like to use kind of crazy colors, but I actually can see a little bit of a purple tint in this portrait here. So I'm adding it in. But then I'll end up adding it in in places where it probably doesn't belong, but that's okay. Still working on this eye. It's causing me problems today. Just want to really make sure that I get the eyes right. Gonna smudge a little, reduce the size of my brush. Rotating your canvas too can really help. So instead of having to rotate your wrist on a funny angle, you guys saw that I could just manipulate my canvas and move around my picture, which is a really nice feature.
So I'm really close right now. And I want to move this shadow out a little bit, so moving the paint around to do that. going to put some highlights on the lips now. So a lot of layering, a lot of going back and forth, back and forth. I want to show you guys in a second kind of a cool move for proportions because remember I told you today I'm struggling. Some days are better than others apparently for me getting my proportions right on the first try. So if you are struggling with proportions, um, I'm going to show you guys a little trick in a second. Um, why don't we just do it right now? So. I'll have my picture here and my picture here and I'll put them side by side and I could kind of see like that this eye just isn't quite in the, the right spot of where I want it, but I don't really want to like go back and completely, you know, ruin everything that I've done already or go through the time to have to redraw a whole entire eye. So what you can do is you can on the layer that has the most detail, for example, you could go up to your adjustments panel and choose liquify. Take a nice big brush, make sure you're on push, and just, and you can change the brush size, but you can grab little sections and just make fine adjustments to your proportion. So if I want that face, that cheek to come in a little bit more here, I can do that. So I'm just using the liquify tool just to help a little bit with proportion. And you don't want to go too far with it either. It's kind of like a fine balance of using this tool. So there we go. So I just made a few little tweaks to that that I think are a little bit helpful. And then anything else that you want to continue to tweak, you can do that afterwards. So I'm just going to make this eye a little bit rounder in this corner. And again, I'm just going to put in a little bit more of the white in the corner. I'm also going to put a little bit of like a pinky purple up near the eyebrows because I think that would look nice. Oops. So I know we're kind of running out of time here guys. It's been an hour so um, usually my portraits I would say I usually spend depends two to three hours on them normally so I won't be able to probably finish this. Um, but before we go, maybe we could do a couple of just little cool things, even though I'm not finished. Um, what you could do too is a couple of things. So I just wanted to show you that with the headdress, 
you could do something, oops, that auto-corrected to headless, but we'll leave it like that for now. Um, you could do something kind of like funky and abstract with it. So I made a new layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to painting, scroll up. And I, I love this Salamanca brush that came new with Procreate 5. And I'm going to use some of my purples in here and kind of pinky purples. And I'll just zoom out of that. Make it a nice big brush size. And I love, this is where I was saying like adding like an abstract element. I love just adding kind of like brush strokes and kind of gestural lines into my portrait. So why don't we do that with this beautiful scarf? And you might, might wanna change the opacity, the size of the brush. And the idea here is to kind of do a couple of different um, mark making techniques. So we want to get the sense of the drape of the fabric, but I don't necessarily want to do it in a super realistic way. So just going to experiment with mark making. There's a little bit of green in there. Might want to reduce my opacity. Let's try a different brush too. Love the Nico roll. It's been around for a little while. Show you guys something cool you can do too. Once you've laid down kind of a base, if you don't want your brush strokes to go outside of that base, you can click on that layer and you can create, actually click on alpha lock and alpha lock masks off everything that is in the background. So now I can kind of use these crazy bold marks and they're not going to they're going to stay confined basically they're not going to go outside of the confines of the headdress but my brush is way too big so it's taken over but we'll try it again that's better so I'm going to kind of use these like stamps which I just love doing for some reason I'm really big fan of mark making and stamps And you're just going to take a whole bunch of different colors and you could pull colors that you've already used. And you could go back to that Salamanca brush if you wanted. I think I want to add the more purple in there. And it just kind of keeps it contained. I might want to use a more textured brush. Go back to that Nico roll. Maybe add a darker shade in certain areas. to provide a little bit of definition. Also, just um, some of the new brushes that are under artistic can be really interesting too to use that have a lot of texture to them. So I might just add in a few of those. And I'm using that Flourish palette, as you guys can see. So I might come off of the Alpha Lock. Just to be able to do a little bit more line work. something like that. So we're just kind of having fun with color. The other thing you can do too is you can just take a brush and go back in and if you have any edges that you want kind of like a ghost effect or just kind of clean up the edges, you 
could go over it with the eraser. Could also take um, something like a turpentine brush under painting. And right now I'm on the smudge tool and you could you know, smudge this out and make it really painterly. And I'm gonna go back actually to my color over layer now. I'm gonna go back to my sketching pencil. I'm just going to define this edge a little bit more. And I'm actually going to go to, sorry, I'm getting all these notifications that I should just put this in airplane mode right now. Um, so I'm just gonna do like a little bit of hatching. The earring will be defined here. So then if you want to put more detail back into it, you could kind of go in and add that detail in. Last, before we kind of wrap up, I'm just going to, and I'm definitely not finished this portrait, but I'm just going to kind of um, keep adding a few details in here. And I want to, still trying to get that face shape to be right. And I'm going to go back to using my gouache pack, um, my soft gouache brush for the side of the face here. I should mention to you guys, if you are interested, again, in creating your own brushes, um, the course through Sketchy or the class through Sketchy called Mastering Media, um, I teach you guys how to make your own custom brush. Or if you're just interested in the brushes that I have been using, like my gouache pack, I sell them on my Etsy shop. So my Etsy shop is just pixel princess art, all one word. And I sell a bunch of brushes there. And like I said, it's just kind of a bit of a hobby of mine. And I love getting feedback on my brushes too, and kind of always improving them and making them better. So I've had a lot of fun doing that. So yeah, this is one of the gouache brushes that I'm using right now. So much to do on this portrait, guys, and just not enough time. Um, yeah, I would. I have a lot more work to do. I would add a lot more detail to the lips and and really everywhere on this portrait. So I'm gonna keep working on that. But before we go, um, I like to add unexpected twists of color into my work. And we've already added some of that with some of the, oops, I forgot I was on that crazy one. We'll go to gouache. Um, we've already added some unexpected twists of color a little bit to the skin tones, but I'm, I'm basing it mostly off of the source photo right now. Um, but also in the skin tones, you can add colors that are kind of not even implicitly there. So for example, if I go to my flourish palette, like some of these like pale greens, for example, would be really cool to add in kind of the highlighted areas. And you're just adding touches of color. So I'm just, I'm going to reduce my opacity here. I'm just going to do it in the corners of the eyes. Maybe a little glow on the side of the iris. And here's a tip for you guys. Um, use cool colors 
for areas that usually I use them for areas that are in um, shadow. Now this lime green, it's kind of serving two purposes because although green is technically a cool color, lime green is getting into a little bit more of the warm tone. So it's one of those ones that can be a bit more versatile and you could use it for, um, for other areas of the face. And then I like to use um, warm colors for areas of the face that really stand out. So I'm gonna use a really bright peach for the ball of the nose, which is kind of already there, and the cheekbone. I'm just accentuating what is already there. Let's use a little bit of blue. Baby blue is always a fun one. Use it in the a little bit on the lips there, a little bit under the nose because that part is in shadow. You could even use it a little bit under the eyes. You just don't want to overdo color when you add in pops of color like this. Um, you just kind of start out really minimal and then work your way into getting more bold because if you add too many cool shades, then you don't want the person to not look alive with energy anymore, right? So you just have to kind of be a little bit cautious of that. But I love adding in these hints of colors to portraits because I just think that it can really add so much to your work. So I'm going to end it there, guys, because I'm already over because apparently I can't do more than one thing at a time. Um, I'm going to look in your comments. I'm going to see if you guys have any questions for me um, regarding Procreate or the 30 Faces 30 Days class. A lot of people are asking, is this recorded? Yes, right after this broadcast, any minute now, it'll be posted here on YouTube. So you can rewatch it if you want as well, if you want to follow along with the tutorial. I'm going to keep working on this and I will be posting it on Sketchy as well as my Instagram. On Sketchy, I'm Pixel Princess and on Instagram, I'm pixelprincess.art if you guys want to see the finished product. So I just want to say, let's have an, oh, there I can switch. I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining me today, everyone. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to draw with me and to come say hi. Um, I'm sorry I didn't maybe see all of your questions. I tend to focus on drawing <laughs> on my iPad and I keep forgetting to look up at the comments, but I will look through them now and uh, answer anything that I missed. So thank you. Remember you guys can sign up for Sketchy's 30 Faces 30 Days that starts on July 1st. And this is a really cool one as all six artists are exclusively going to be using Procreate to do all of their portraits. But just remember, if you don't have Procreate or if you simply want to use a different medium, you're more than welcome to do that. This challenge is for absolutely everyone. It doesn't matter if you have Procreate or not. If you're just uh, someone who wants to learn more about art or follow along and do uh, portraits in a community of artists, then this challenge is for you. So you can sign up now. Click on the link in this video in order to sign up. And there's a promotion on right now too. You get another class at 8% off, which is an amazing deal. I hope to see all of you guys on July 1st and throughout July. I can't wait to see what everybody creates in the month of July. So thank you so much for joining me, guys. Have a good day.